Hello, so here with a new video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we are going to cover uh, REST API for Power Max. In this video, we are going to cover four main topics uh, the provisioning via REST, we are going to cover local replication via REST, remote replication, and get performance statistics via REST. But first of all, what is REST? The Power Mask REST API. REST is an architectural style that allows interoperability between computer systems over the World Wide Web. REST leverages existing standards including HTTP, URI, and JSON, amongst others. There are four main operations available in REST, which is GET, POST, PUT, and DELETE. The REST API for Power Max and Vmax is a core part of the Unix Free Server and sits at the same layer of the stack as the Unix Free GUI, and therefore it takes advantage of the same automation and intelligence features built into the Unix Free for Power Max UI. Uh, finally, here we have the, uh, the architecture of the REST API. So here you can see that uh, the main one is the dial and sister system, then we have the SIM API. And next we have the Unis Free Server, which is also on the same level with SIM CLI, but moving to the one, one step further, here we have the Unis Free GOI in the same level as REST API. So REST, uh, the Dell EMC PowerMax REST API has the next modules available. We have the slow provisioning, uh, normal provisioning, replication, migration system, and performance. So let's start this laboratory opening, opening the Unis Free. And in this first lesson, we are going to create a new storage group called REST Test. First of all, let's modify the current status before we submit any a new REST call. Alright, let's move to the 0107. Alright, I just fixed the zoom. Let's go to storage, then storage groups. All right, so currently we have 61 items, 61 storage group. If I look for REST test storage group, it's not going to be displayed here. No, nothing there. And now I'm going to minimize this and open Postman. Postman is a really good tool for creating and testing REST calls and queries. Fortunately, for these, for these exercises, we have the queries pre-made. So I am going to show you here, I am going to make, maximize it. And let me zoom more, zoom in. All right, so here we have the collections. If we expand uh, this main folder, here we have the four models that we are going to cover today. And here we have the model web provisioning. So these are the, the calls that we are going to execute. Let's take a look on the first one list arrays so this is the the url where a rest call is going to be directed via http and it's really important to mention that uh, these values uh, inside the the curly brackets are a variable so if i hover the mouse over the the value uh, over the variable here we can see the value so or unis free host as you can see is launchpad here we can see the port number and here we can see also the API version. So basically, this is the uh, the main structure of the URL for uh, for sending REST calls to the to the Unis Free. Here you can see that our Unis Free server is Launchpad 8444. So here we can see the same, but as a variable. Uh, this is saved in a JSON file. Let me show you here. This has been saved here in C, then hold then Ansible and this is uh, this is a store here in this JSON file if I open it with notepad++ uh, these are the queries in JSON format that we are going to execute via postman but if I scroll down to the bottom here I am going to see the variable section 
And here I can see that uh, the array ID is the 0107. Here we can see the API version, the Unix free host IP, which is the launch pad. So this is matching perfectly with the Postman variables. Yep, right here. All right, next section we have the authorization tab. Uh, here we are using the basic authentication. If I expand this menu, I, here I can see better talk and so many options here. So for today's we are going to use just basic authentication. And here we can see the username and password that is going, that is going to execute these REST calls. If I click on show password, it's showing SMC, basic SMC. Uh, it's really important to mention also that uh, this is the parent authorization tab that is going to execute the rest of the call. So all the calls are referenced to this main one, the very first one, the very first one, rest call. Okay, so in this, this first call is going to uh, to request uh, the arrays available. Let's click on send. All right, here we can see the the status response is 200, which is OK. And here we have the symmetric uh, array that we are going to work, the 0107. As you can see it here, this is not listed on the top. OK, now let's get some array details. So I'm moving to the next call. And here I can see that after symmetric on the URL, the array ID has been added into the URL as a value as a variable and the value is the 0107 serial number okay so let's click on send and here we can see the output so as this is a JSON format and here we have the, the key and the value so here we have more information about the array at the bus count the microcode level uh, the model itself the SRP the provisioning capacity use it uh, compared with against total and free TV here we have also a snapshot capacity, system efficiency, uh, service layer compliance, physical capacity. It's displaying really good information through JSON format. Okay, now moving to the next call. This is the list storage group. Here you can see that uh, we are still using the HTTP method or verb get. And we are adding after the array ID, the storage group keyword. So if I click on send, I am going to receive a response, all a whole list of the storage groups uh, that uh, that they are living there. So here we have a list of all of them, and the last one here, here we can see customer billing. All right, so here you can see that the account ends with the line fifty-five. So let's move on to the next query. This is the create new storage group. So here you can see that um, the URL is similar, but we are changing the, the method from get to post. So post means that it's going to create a new item. And if I click on the body, here we are going to see the, um, the JSON requirements for creating a new storage group. Here we can see that the ID of the storage group is going to be, as I mentioned before, rested. We, here we can see the, uh, the SRP, SRP underscore one, uh, the service level, which is diamond, and also the volumes that are going to live in this storage group. It's going to be one volume of two gigabyte. Here you can see it. And here we can see also the identifier name. All right. So I, I'm going to click on send. And the response is loading. And here we can see the a difference between the, the response before it was 200 for OK now it's 201 for created so a new item has been created and if I scroll down a little bit here we can see the response from the array and it's basically confirming the information that we just sent if I list again the storage group and clicking on send if I scroll down to the bottom here I can see a new line for our new created storage group REST test. So if I move to the units free, I am going to refresh this, uh, this storage group perspective. As you can see here, there are 61 items. So I'm refreshing it just 
uh, moving in between the tabs and now I can see 62 items this is really good so I can see now the rest that's a storage group here yep it is here okay so now let's move to the uh, next calls press calls uh, the next call is get the storage group details Uh, here in the URL, here we can see that after stress group, we have added as a variable the SG name, rest test. Let's click on set. Uh, so this basically will let us know overall information about a stress group. And for the next steps in this exercise, we are going to create a masking view. So first of all, let's display the list for groups. So instead of a storage group, here we can see power group. And here we can see the all power groups associated with this uh, array 0107. Now let's take a look into the host. Here you can see the URL has changed to host. Click on send. And here we are going to see all the hosts uh, configured here as an initiator group here we can see it with the IG naming convention as we saw in previous videos and now let's take a look to the masking views here you can see on the URL that masking view sorry the URL has changed with masking view after the array ID so also same information here we can see the masking views uh, ending with the MB naming convention now we are going to create a masking view for our new storage group called rest test here you can see uh, the method has changed to post and after array ID we are we are creating under we are creating this under the masking view section let's take a look into the body of this call and here on the medium section here you can see that the masking view ID is going to be rest test MB and this is going to associate uh, the host ID IO call an existing host with port group OS ISCO CPG and they will uh, the storage that will be presented there is going to be our new storage group rest tests let's click on send response should be 201 for created you can see it here and here we can see the uh, the confirmation received from the from the array the new masking view has been created and as you may remember in the previous call we list the masking views here you can see it it's ending with warehouse data MB with the line number 33 if I click on send here we can see the new masking view rest test this is this is it for provisioning so now I'm moving to the next section first of all I would like to close all these calls just a second all right next section is local replication in this local replication we are going to create a snapshot for our new created storage group called rest test so i am going to show you how is it working from here from the units free as more graphical perspective i just click on the storage on the storage group rest test then data protection and here we can see that there is no snapshots let's move back to postman and we are going to list the storage group a snapshot here we can see the url that's pointing to a storage group then a snapshot this snap underscore ag name uh, is for our newly created storage group rest test let's click on send the response should be OK, 200. Here we can see it, but it's sending empty information. So here you can see that's empty. And we are going to create a new storage group. Let's click on the next call, create a storage group. Sorry, a storage group a snapshot. And here we can see that the action has changed from get to post. And let's move to the body. Here we can see that the name of this snapshot is going to be rest test snap one and the time to leave is going to be just one hour so let's click on send 
and as a confirmation from the array we are going to see that uh, the new snapshot has been created here we can see the snap uh, snap id snap identification this is unique and here we can see the the time step of the creation of the snapshot which is november 3rd uh, at 3 pm and here we can see that uh, the expiration time of this snapshot is going to be today at 4 pm almost 4 pm all right so now let's list again the storage group snapshots if i click on send here we are going to see our new rest test snap one okay what about the link in the snapshot uh, you know as a storage administrator uh, we sometimes we have to provide a snapshot as a copy for several things that they need to test perform some tests or create some um, some constraints on the data or any kind of testing so from a snapshot we are create uh, we are providing a, a consistent copy of the original data of the production data but without affecting it so in this in this link in a snapshot activity we are going to create a, a new storage group that is going to purpose as as a dummy a storage group for for this for this section all right so here you can see that uh, instead of get or post we have the put verb or put method the difference with uh, between uh, post and put is that post is for creating a new item while put is for modifying an existing item so in this section we are going to um, we are going to modify an existing a snapshot the snapshot that we just create and we are going to set as a link for a new storage group this storage group is going to be presented to the customer or whoever is requesting it for, uh, to work on this on this test test all right so let's take a look into the body and here we can see that this is a simple simple query as json here we can see that the action is going to be link and the new storage group that is going to present this snapshot is rest test link sg001 and the action is link so let's just click on send all right and here we have the the response 200 for okay and just a second all right so here we can see a lot of plenty information about the the rest test snap one that's linked to a new storage group that we just set here and we are now able to to present this storage group to to our customer how can we achieve it with creating a masking view as we saw before here we have the option to create a, a masking view if i click on the body here we are going to see that uh, the storage group selection is our new created storage group rest test link sg001 all right so let's click on send and this uh, this masking view is going to involve uh, the port group os is cosy and the host ir code 2s 2sd35 so as a response here we have the uh, the confirmation of from the array 201 created and if i go to the unit free I'm moving one level back to storage group here we can see that the count has been increased from 62 to 63 and now i'm looking for rest test all right so if i pre-select the rest test link sg001 here we are going to see uh, the same information yep here it is here is the masking view so if I click on here, here we are going to see more information. Somehow it's hitling, but uh, the new masking view has been created. So the last exercise under the local replication is the relink snapshot. So probably when your customer is done with their test, uh, they need they probably need a new set of data that was provided originally so how can we achieve it we can achieve it with relinking and a snapshot so this will this will basically create a a, a new link 
that's going to reference to the point in time snapshot and the customer can continue with the tests as required. All right, so here we can see on the body that the action has changed from, from link to run link. And here we can see also the storage group name. So just for example, I am going to change this from 001 to 002. Let's click on send. And this is also a boot action. All right, response time, uh, it's really good, uh, almost two seconds. And if I scroll down a little bit, here we can see uh, the link information that uh, here we have uh, REST link 001 storage group and the new relinked SG002. We can, we can validate this in the storage group section and moving one level back, here I can see uh, 64 items and here I can see the new status group 002 All right, all right So I'm minimizing this and closing the calls for the next for the next section I don't want to save the changes Just a second please All right, next exercise, remote replication. So let's list the SRDF storage groups. Uh, here also we can see the get method. And take a look at this. Here we can see that uh, a parameter is sent as a query where a storage group is sending a question mark for has SRDF equals true. So here we can see on the parameters and let's click on send. So these kind of parameters let us uh, create more granular calls to get more precise information. So here we can see that there are only five storage group uh, in this array that's having that's been configured with SRDF. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there are five storage group. All right. So let's get storage group details from our new storage group called REST test. Let's click on send. And I want you to take a look on this. Here we can see that uh, for unprotected key, it's true. This means that this storage group has no SRDF. So we are going to protect it with SRDF. So now the change, uh, the method has changed to post. And here we can see in the query, in the URL call query, that uh, now it has changed from slow provision to replication symmetrics. Here, um, here we are listing the 0107 storage group and for this storage group uh, sorry the 0107 uh, serial number array for storage group rest test we are moving to the next section RDF group if we take a look into the body uh, for this SRDF group it's going to the replication mode is going to be synchronous here we have our remote destination 0647 the web that we are we have been working in previous videos and talking about uh, the remote storage group is going to be the TW rest 2022 so let's click on send for this post operation and here we can see the status is 201 created and here you can see that the status is now synchronized and here we have uh, a uh, very good confirmation that the SRDF has been created as requested. How can we see it? Let's move back to the get storage group details. And from unprotected, we are going to see the change here. So let's click on send. And there you go. Instead of unprotected, now it has been updated to false. So this means that this storage group now is being protected with SRDF. Now I'm closing these tabs and we are now moving to the next section get performance metrics alright so probably in, as you as you are working as a student engineer you probably may need some performance at any time of your shift and getting this information from the REST API is really useful because it's getting uh, precise numbers in the in the time step that you may require so if I take a look to the URL 
uh, the REST API has moved from uh, from the SRDF to the performance. Now here we have the, the help section for all array from for all array 0107. Let's click on send. And here we have uh, information about the categories in the performance here. Here we can uh, gather information about the array, the backend director, the board team. So we have plenty of options here. So let's move to the next call. And now here we are going to see more information as help for the KPI. So if I click on set, uh, KPI stands for Key Performance Indicator. And here we can see that I'm talking about the storage group level. Here we have this plenty of categories or subcategories that we can gather uh, performance information. So for the next query, uh, we can we can focus as an example for host IOs and for host MBs megabytes. All right. So let's move to the next call. And this is how we are going to get uh, a storage group performance metrics. So if we click on the body, uh, this is the JSON format for the Symmetrix 0107. And really important to mention that the start date and the end date they are coming as uh, they are coming as uh, epoch epoch format, which is a Unix standard uh, that's having this 30 bit 32 bit uh, long variable. And uh, I just checked before uh, that this is for February, uh, around February. And here we can see that uh, we are going to uh, check the metrics for host IOs and host MBs for our new created storage group, REST test. So let's click on send. And let me scroll down more. Here we can see or as a timestamp uh, the frequency of our performance metrics. So in this timestamp, here we can see that the host IOs are almost six, uh, 6.3 uh, 6 thousand host IOs. And for talking about megabytes, we here we have uh, 328 megabytes and that particular timestamp. Just let me show you about that timestamp. Give me a second. So if I if I shrink this and I expand, here we have the epoch converter, and now let's uh, I am going to show you how this is being displayed in human format. So I am I am going to show you here. It's sixteen forty five forty five. 26 and now let's hit it all right so here you can see that uh, this epoch format it's being converted to the monday uh, february 21st of 2022 this is it for this lesson thank you so much